actually time for me to bring out my dear colleague, Dean Takahashi and Charles Huang from Green Throttle Games. Come on up, fellas. Uh, thanks, everybody, for staying to this uh, bitter end here. Uh, it's better than sitting in the traffic, right? <laughs> so. okay. I thought it was just going to be Dean and I sitting here chatting with each other. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Charles, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, by the way, if you guys uh, can't get enough VentureBeat, um, we're going to have our GamesBeat conference uh, on October 29th and 30th this, this year. So don't forget about that. Um, uh, tell us what Green Throttle does, uh, Charles. Well, we make uh, what I call a virtual console. So uh, we're trying to displace consoles using uh, your mobile phone or tablet uh, by building everything except the console. So that's controllers, games, uh, interface that changes it from the touch mobile UI to a television UI. <clears throat> so the consumer, instead of having to buy a, a you know, four to six hundred dollar uh, video game console in the future, can just take the phone or tablet that they have and buy controllers uh, and games uh, and have the ability to play games on TV uh, mm -hmm. without needing to buy a console. Mm -hmm. And you have, do you have a slide to show yet? Or the, do you want to do Yeah. <clears throat> okay. mm -hmm. And so uh, what we're trying to do is to push mobile stack of technologies into a different uh, screen size. Uh, and the reason why television is important to a lot of the big uh, companies, tech companies, so Apple, Samsung, Google, everybody's, you know, Microsoft aligning around the television and living room is I think uh, this research that Google showed, which shows that engagement per session goes up uh, with screen size. <clears throat> and there seems to be a direct correlation. Um, and as a lot of people know in the app world, uh, there's a lot of ev evidence to show that as session time gets longer and people are more engaged, monetization increases. And so I think that's where, why, if you look at television, television games is the biggest part. It's still almost half of the total global video game market by revenues. Uh, today that happens to be games you play on consoles, Xboxes, Playstations, and Wiis. Uh, and I think in the future a lot of that gets replaced by games that you play on iOS, on Android, but on a bigger screen. Um, and just the natural consumer behavior will allow for greater monetization uh, as the screen size gets bigger. So when it, like, it comes to Android invading the living room and disrupting the $60 console game with free-to-play titles, um, we have a, a ton of competitors now. Um, so you, you sort of fit alongside NVIDIA's Project Shield and GameStick and OUYA, uh, MOGA, uh, MHL, PlayStation Mobile, um, others too. Um, how are you sort of distinguishing yourself from this, this whole set of folks? And yeah, but, so there's a lot of companies trying to push that whole ecosystem into the living room and onto the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, our particular focus tends to be more on bringing mobile devices and connecting them to televisions. So we're more focused on a mobile to TV experience. Uh, we're trying to leverage devices that people already own in their homes, uh, phones, tablets. Uh, most people mo own multiple of these. and. Um, for us, when we look at these devices compared to what a console traditionally is, we see there's a CPU, there's a GPU, there's memory, there's an internet connection. And that's basically what you need for a, a gaming console. Mm -hmm. And so we see that on the phones and tablets, and they're increasing in power. So for us, we're focused on a, a mobile to TV experience. Mm -hmm. And what do you guys mean in this sort of broader context of, of making mo mobile into a more social experience? Yeah, that's, that's an, always an interesting question. <clears throat> uh, area for us. So television is the one screen uh, of those that's really a shared screen, right? So you watch television with your family and your friends. And that changes the dynamics of how you engage. So before I started this company, um, uh, I started a company with my brother called Red Octane, and we made a game called Guitar Hero. Uh, and I remember one time getting a, a letter from, uh, you know, back then, this was, uh, was the early in Guitar Hero days, from a, a father who said that he had spent two hours the night before playing Guitar Hero with his teenage daughter. And he wrote the letter to us just to thank us for giving him that bonding moment with his daughter that he said, we haven't had an experience like that for years. So a shared experience on a big screen like a TV, wow. shared gaming experience, can be very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what we, we are going after in terms of being social, as in bringing families and, and friends together in the same room and allowing them to interact with each other. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's our vision of mm -hmm. social. Mm -hmm. 
So to achieve this, uh, you, you put a guitar in people's hands with your last startup, and, and now you're gonna put a game controller in their hands, I guess. Uh, they, they could also have a remote control. Uh, what's sort of the, the difference that, that results from what you put in their hands? I guess? Yeah, so I think, you know, as technologies begin to cut across multiple platforms, one of the last remaining barriers besides screen size is the input device. So to us, you know, when I look at a mobile phone or a tablet and I see games on it, to me, a touch screen is simply another game controller, mm -hmm. right? There are joysticks, there are game pads, steering wheels, guitar controllers. There's many ways you can use a, a Wii mode, a Kinect camera. Uh, you know, and, and a touch screen is just another game controller. A remote control for a TV is just another input device, another game controller, to, in my view. Mm -hmm. So I think what's great for games is the more game controllers you have, the more types of games you can play. Mm -hmm. So you play a Wii mode game, very differently than you would play a, uh, a game with a joystick or a steering wheel. So I think all of those enhance the experience. There won't be one sort of controller to rule them all. Uh, there will be, I think, uh, a lot of controllers that change the gaming experience every time mm -hmm. you play. Mm -hmm. And so is, is the ecosystem and infrastructure ready to do what you need to make happen in the living room, uh, connecting mobile into the living room? Devices. Yeah, I, you know, I think despite the efforts of a lot of the big companies, it, the infrastructure is there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, as I said before, CPU, GPU, internet connection, all of that is there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of the last barriers are uh, a lot of the big companies that control these devices tend to like to build walls around, you know, their particular uh, family of devices. Mm -hmm. So all the biggest companies in technology are right now gearing up for battle in the living room. So. That's Apple, that's Microsoft, that's Google, that's Samsung. Um, and as long as they uh, don't erect walls that are too high for folks like us, then we should be able to do it with the infrastructure in place. It's so like the, um, one of the things that doesn't seem quite ready is, is connecting to your TV set. Uh, it would be great if you could do that wirelessly, right? But now you have to use a, a cable of some kind, right? Right. <clears throat> so right now, uh, you know, most people don't even know you can connect a phone or a tablet to a TV and output whatever is running there onto a TV. So as you're talking about, there's, uh, there's t too many ways to do that. I think it confuses the consumer. There's HDMI cables that can connect tablets directly. There are MHL adapters that people use for phones. Mm -hmm. Apple uses another uh, technology called DisplayPort. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of consumer behavior uh, that won't, basically won't be able to adopt to the ways that what I was talking about earlier, different companies erecting walls. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I think if they can build common platforms mm -hmm. and uh, interfaces, it would help a lot. So is, is there a more specific ask you have of sort of the, the giants of mobile uh, to, to, to get them to build this, build out this ecosystem and standardize <laughs> everything? Yeah, I mean, obviously that, uh, you know, you're asking people to change their DNAs and, <clears throat> and it's very hard. Uh, you know, we, we work with uh, Samsung devices, and, and funny enough, Samsung phones and tablets won't work with Samsung TVs many times, right? Um, so it's very difficult to expect them to work with other people's TVs and, and other people's devices. But, um, but I think that's part of the ask for uh, a lot of the folks that are in the ecosystem, like myself, is that um, there are common ways to get onto multiple devices mm -hmm. uh, and multiple classes of devices like tablets and TVs and, and phones and TVs and phones and tablets. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you still went and did this startup anyway, right? Uh, there's uh, all this uncertainty around you know, how things could change. Uh, we're sort of in the middle of a console transition as well. The, um, you, you, created the company before you even knew what the PlayStation 4 was, right? right. Whether, whether or not that would fit or, you know, sort of compete against uh, your ecosystem. Um, so how, how, do you, how do you sort of get the guts to do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, you know, I, I came from uh, the console gaming world, right? Um, and in, in console games, every five to seven years, there's an entire upheaval. There's a new generation of consoles, right? PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3, PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2. And uh, each time there is this you know, transition to the next gen, you don't know who's going to win. You don't know what's going to happen. You, nobody ever saw the Wii coming, right? And so I guess in games, we're a little bit more used to uh, upheaval and transition and changing the way that consumers uh, behave, <clears throat> and so there's a little bit more faith. I, I, I like to tell a story about games uh, that a friend of mine who's a, <clears throat> a tech investor 
said that, um, he said years ago, the technology that drove, cons or the, the, the sector that drove consumer adoption of technology uh, was pornography, right? He said, so people didn't put, the, the, you know, the people in that industry don't invent the technologies, but if you think about things like streaming video, you know, VHS, uh, Betamax tapes at home, e-commerce transactions, a lot of that were driven by the porn industry. Mm -hmm. And what he said is over the last five or 10 years, that seems to have shifted to video games. So video games push people to use 3D accelerated graphics, mm -hmm. you know, alternative input devices like the Wii Mode and the Kinect cameras. Um, and, and so I think there is perhaps uh, a little bit more consumer acceptance of uh, foreign concepts like we're trying to push mm -hmm. and room for startups in games than there might be in a lot of other traditional mm -hmm. uh, tech sectors. I won't talk about the porn part. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've launched now, I guess, uh, with the Amazon Kindle. Um, I guess, what was it like getting that off the ground and what are some of the results for you too? Um, I guess you've also had to uh, have uh, some games, uh, game makers sort of adapt to your universe, right? Yes, yeah. So uh, we launched uh, in February, uh -huh. uh, initially on the, on the Kindle. Uh -huh. uh, you know, that is one area where, um, because we are a startup, so you're talking about the challenges as a startup. As a startup, it was difficult to go into the Android world and try to support the number of devices, uh, you know, uh, Google Play, mm -hmm. um, the distribution channels being Best Buy, uh, Target. Uh, it's a complex system in the Android world. Mm -hmm. When we went with Amazon, it's you know very vertically integrated. So as a startup, you sort of pick your fights within that. Mm -hmm. so, so we launched on Amazon because they ran their own app store. They, they, they own their own device. <clears throat> they own distribution channel through Amazon.com. So there are ways for, for a small company like ours to be able to try to launch. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the other point that you made about uh, content uh, pipeline coming into uh, this, this world, mm -hmm. um, I think we're finding uh, a lot of interest amongst uh, indie developers but also a lot of interest amongst uh, big uh, console publishers who are trying to figure out their place in the next gen. Mm -hmm. right, so the, the Activisions and the EAs and the Capcoms and the Segas uh, are facing a console transition. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time it's not certain that Microsoft, Sony, or Nintendo will win. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're getting a lot of interest from people who have classically made television games exploring Android and iOS for the first time. So when you're adding a new platform, what does it take for you? Uh, how much work is that for you guys to, to do? So I think the, um, you know, our controllers work via Bluetooth. So there are common standards like that that uh, we can go into. But, um, you know, a lot of the times I would say this, it's not really a technology issue that keeps us working, for instance, on iOS. Um, it's really business practices that are different uh, at a lot of these big companies. So it's very Anybody who's been in this uh, business knows it's very different when you interact with Apple versus Google versus Microsoft, mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of the times we take we pick a particular approach, whether it be a business approach or a technology approach, <clears throat> and then one of the other uh, platform holders just shuts that down. Mm -hmm. So for us, um, you know, it's it's really not a technology issue as much as it is kind of a, a business relationship issue. Mm -hmm. So is this uh, easier than launching Guitar Hero? <laughs> no, nobody, <clears throat> nobody believed uh, that uh, you know Americans would buy uh, games that you play with a plastic guitar. Mm -hmm. as, as one investor told us that uh, after we pitched it, he said that was uh, we couldn't possibly invest in that. He said you were two random brothers with a plastic guitar. <laughs> 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 and uh, so no, I guess I guess uh, this this one uh, people haven't said <laughs> uh -huh. that about it. Uh, which I guess uh, should scare me a little bit. <laughs> hey, you got a billion dollar sort of startup behind you, so uh, maybe they, they're, they're more likely to believe now, I guess. But uh, anyway, uh, do we have any questions in the audience? Yeah. Yeah. Devinder? Or, yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Devinder from VentureBeat here. Um, I'm just wondering, like, with the rise of this, uh, all the other sort of really interesting um, Kickstarter consoles too, like the Ouya, uh, like the, I think the GamePad, the other one that's come out. You know, how is that changing the perception of what you guys wanted to do? Is that kind of validating what you're doing? Uh, yeah, that's the a Steam good- Steambox too, by the way. Yes, yes, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I think what's happened is, um, um, you know, everybody's coming right now in the first half of this year 
just because I think the agenda for the television over the next five years or so is being set in the first half of this year. You have Sony that's already announced what their PlayStation will do in February. Microsoft will probably announce what the Xbox will do in April. And so that means everybody else who wants to, to, to be in the living room and be on television has to come this year and ship their products. So uh, I think that's why in particular the first half of this year you're seeing so much activity uh, both amongst the big companies and as amongst the startups. Uh, and uh, the beauty of, of the sort of the ARM, Android stack of technologies is there's many different approaches. So you can have uh, set-top boxes, phones and tablets connected to TVs, HDMI sticks that plug in like the game stick. Uh, and I think all of that is uh, unclear now which path will consumers choose, but uh, that's part of what makes it exciting for us. Uh, or like this fellow asked the last question here. Yeah. Russ McGuire okay. from Sprint. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, I think the, the basic value proposition that I heard is you recreate the console experience, but you've kind of taken advantage of the, the fact that what we carry in our pockets or in our you know, carry around with us has the, the key technology investment. But I assume that part of what you're thinking too is not just to recreate the dinosaur of the console that you know, I think to some extent you believe is dying, but to leverage the power of the big screen with the power of mobility. So, you know, what, what, what's the key to that? Or, you know, what's the magic that kind of fits between those two? Yeah, <clears throat> that definitely is a, uh, you know, we've experimented with games that um, uh, you can play uh, while you're away, you know, out and about on the phone. And then when you come back and you connect them to a TV, you can play that game or a different part of that game using controllers. So I think there's a sort of uh, a dual pers personality to being a mobile device connected to a TV. Uh, it's unclear uh, you know, how that plays out, but I think there's definitely something unique about that, that the tethered box to a television can do. All right, great, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.